F1 22 is now out for everyone, and I'm sure you are already stuck into your career modes. But if you are struggling with what to do first or want to know how to turn your performances around from pointless backmarker to championship contender, then I have got five top tips and tricks for your F1 22 career modes. Most career modes in F1 22 begin either with a team running at the back or as the newcomer setting on the My Team career mode. So these tips will be more tailored to those career modes but if you need help for tips for being in the midfield or contending for the championship then make sure you subscribe for future videos at the beginning of every career mode you have three choices to make sponsor engine supplier and driver but which of these three is best let's start off with the sponsor now this is a very simple one you want to go with the one that is offering you the most on the starting fee the goal that they give you may look difficult at first, but by the end of your first season, you'll be fighting for points finishes, so it is achievable. Having the biggest starting budget from your sponsor means you can now purchase the best engine there is. But hold off this for now, as you'll be wanting to save your money for a top tier driver. Plus, the difference between Merc and Ferrari engines is very minimal. Finally, which driver should you go for? Of course, you can go for your favorite F2 driver that is available and if they are the cheaper option this frees up some budget for a better engine or even facility upgrades from the start i'd recommend nabbing oscar piastri though he is the best rookie driver in the field by some way if you don't see the driver you want in the lineup though just head back to the menu and try again till they show up when you jump into career mode it's best to take a look around and see what you are dealing with what facilities are already upgraded and which are indeed departments are lacking behind the others. From here, head into the activities area on the home menu. These activities update between race weekends and can vary between a few weeks of team activities to two days. Making sure you partake in the activity options given to you should be the first thing you do when you head back into this menu screen. You can gain lots of team acclaim, money, and also resource points. All of these are vital to making your car into a race winner. Another area that shouldn't be ignored is the morale boost. Departments with a higher morale will help reduce the risk of that part failing and taking longer to be added to the car. Some activities will raise the morale of one department but lower the morale of another. For this, focus on the departments that are falling behind to make sure your car is performing across all areas. When it comes to picking what part of the car to upgrade and not to upgrade, this can leave you scratching your head as to what will actually make you go faster. But there is one department which you can all but avoid in the early stages, allowing you to focus those precious resource points on actual performance. The durability department's main role in the career mode is to make your engine components wear out at a slower rate. As you progress through the career mode, this means you take less penalties for switching out and taking extra parts. But for the first half of the season, chances are you'll be out in Q1 and starting nearer the back of the grid. If and when this does happen and you are in that bottom five, feel free to take extra engine parts and bank them for later in the season. Stacking your penalties in one race will only affect you for that event. This also takes the strain off the durability department as you will have an abundance of spare engines and won't get close to them going pop due to wear and tear, allowing you to to spend more resource points on reducing that drag or making the car lighter in the corners. If you have random failures on, however, these can still happen, and having low durability on the car will affect your teammate, so use this with caution. And did you know one like on this video will keep away any and all engine failures? Supercars are new to F122, and with that comes new events in the career mode. Before every race weekend, you'll be asked to take part in a Pirelli hot lap event, where you can jump into one of these cars and take on a quick scenario. Now, whilst it may be tempting to ignore these and get straight into your own practice sessions, don't. Even if you don't enjoy having supercars on the new game, these events can really help out your career modes. On completing these Pirelli hot laps, you will achieve acclaim and money based on how well you perform. And acclaim is the most important component of the career mode, as this can determine how many sponsors you have on the car and also how much money you can generate through the year. 
or if you are in a driver career mode, it also determines what teams are willing to sign you as a driver. So for five to 10 minutes spent on these, you could gain a huge amount of acclaim and money, which can massively help you climb to the top of Formula One. Practice programs are the most important part of the Formula One weekend, as it's where you gain almost all your resource points, which as we have already discussed, helps you buy upgrades to make your car go faster. But also, there are bonus discounts that are up for grabs. Before you head into the first practice session, reduce your AI difficulty to about 10 less than you would usually have it. This is because all programs bar the track acclimatization have a minimum lap time you have to pass, regardless of if you meet the criteria of the actual program you are doing. To make things worse, the lap time to beat is set at a near impossible level for the AI mode you are running. So make sure to turn this down if you want to gain the benefits of actually taking part in these. Quick practice can also be really useful, especially if you struggle to tick off the bonus challenges. You can head into quick practice for FP3 and get these ticked off, maximizing your practice sessions and giving you the best chance of making your car that much quicker. Just remember though, to turn the difficulty back up to your usual level before you start qualifying. And there you have it, five tips to help you go from a rear gunner to race winner on the F1 22 career mode. What are you struggling with most on F1 22? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.